Hello. Transport bar. All this stuff down at the bottom. Bags and bags of information. How much of it do we need? Well, almost all of it. It's really useful. This is how my transport bar looks. Yours won't look like this. You'll need to configure it yourself. You've got these little drag handles that you can use to close and open stuff up. There's a little cog at the end that we can use to specify what we want to see and what we don't want to see. So how you see it here is how I have my standard setup. I'm going to show you all of this stuff and you can decide what you want and what you don't. Over here is the thing that I almost never use, ironically. Uh, so it's the, the kind of the least useful of all the stuff, but it does get used occasionally. So this is where we set the punch in, punch out. So as it says, clicking record again during a recording stops the current recording. That's what I do. If I'm recording like a MIDI track and it's eight bars long, I might press play, listen to the first three bars, hit record, play a few notes, hit record again, shut it off, and it just inserts those notes into the part. I find that the most useful way of working. So I almost never do anything with this. I just have punch in and out set. Uh, the other option, re-record, clicking record again during a recording cleans up and restarts the recording. So I pretty much don't use that. That's that's not, not a function. I'm not going to go into it very much because I don't do it. Down here, start recording again. I very rarely touch this. Start recording at left locator or the punch position is what I want to do. If, I, if the, the song is stopped and I press record, I want it to start recording at the position of the left locator. So I have that I have that option set. So of all of the information down here, this is the stuff that I could get rid of. It just it just so happens that the width of my monitor has a little bit of empty real estate over here, so it gets to stay. Audio record mode, keep history. Again, very very rarely touch uh, this basically just stores everything all of the time and then it's up to me uh, what i delete later so let's not worry too much about that set it leave it job done now these two these do get changed a lot and it's kind of confusing how they relate to each other see at the moment it's set to new parts stacked if i choose merge this option changes as well there are some settings that can only work if one of the other settings is set. So it's just a case of learning what they mean. But what we're talking about here is when you're recording like a keyboard line, how does that MIDI get saved? How does that MIDI get stored? So if we're looping around a four bar section and we're playing loads and loads of keyboard notes, what do we want to happen? Do we want all of those notes to get added into one massive ever ever expanding part as we record if we do that's merge mix uh, do we want to create completely brand new recordings every four bars that would be new parts stacked do we only ever want to have the latest data that we've recorded in which case we would choose the overwrite option for the most part, the most common uh, options I go for are new parts stacked. I like that a lot. So I just get distinct, clean. Every four bars it comes around, I'm gonna get some new information. I get a, another opportunity to try to record it properly. And then I'll just pick the best one. But sometimes I want to like layer a chord together. So I'll play one note of the chord and then let it come around and then play another note of the chord and build the thing up like a palette in which case I'll use merge mix. I would say those are the, I'm not gonna go any further. Those are the two, like 95% of the time that I use the most, but I do toggle backwards and forwards between them a lot, depending on the requirements of the song at the time. So I try to keep it as new parts stacked. And then if I want to go into merge mode, I'll flip across, but that's my default. A lot of these concepts we'll deal with in a lot more detail in subsequent videos where I deal with single topics in much greater detail. This is an overview, so I'm really rattling through it. Auto-quantize, when that's on, 
anything that you record on the keyboard will get corrected in time. Now it might be that your playing is so far out it actually moves it the wrong way according to what your whatever time setting you've you've defined as being um, the, the, the current quantize level. Quantizing is a huge subject. Parcel that off, but that's auto quantize on or off. I almost never turn it on. I like to be in control of when I move my notes, but it's there. Occasionally, I will turn it on. This here just jumps us to the left locator and that jumps us to the right locator, but I have L and R mapped on my keyboard to do that, so I typically access it from the keyboard. This is where we can set our locator values if we want. So if we go from 15 to 23, there we go, that's bar position 15 there. These are your standard transport controls. I'm not going to explain them, everybody understands. That one there maybe, that's your cycle. So whatever your, your loop section is, this purple section over here. If your cycle mode is on, then it loops around inside these locators. There's your left locator, there's your right locator. The song just goes round and round and round. Uh, slash on your numeric keypad turns that on and off. The rest of them are too obvious to describe. This is our song position, so we can jump wherever we want in the song. It just immediately jumps the song marker there. This is our tempo. If we change the tempo, you'll see that it will change on the tempo track as well. There it is, 104. It's now 105, okay? So this is constantly telling us what our tempo is. Tempo in the tempo track is controlled by these little dots. I can draw as many tempo changes in as I want. This is the time signature. Again, you can access this from the time signature track or change this master setting down here. Then we have metronome options. So this will turn your click on. If I just go back to... So at the moment it's, it's playing, the song is playing, but we're not hearing anything. So if, you, if you're recording something and you want to be in time and you've got no other timed music to play against, you can turn the metronome on. Generally speaking, I do all of my recording against drum rhythms as opposed to the metronome, but it's there if you want it. This section over here, activate counting. Um, if this is on, which it always is for me, when I press record, I get a one bar counting and I get a one bar counting because I've told it to give me a one bar counting number of bars counting one defaults to two two is just too long for me I'm ready to go after a bar if it was a very fast tempo I might switch it to two because you just don't have enough time if it's going one two three go it's like oh well I've just pressed record and I haven't got time to pick up my guitar so you know use common sense and that's it, transport bar. There's, um, we've got a meter over here, which if there was audio activity, you'd see the audio meter there. And our master settings cog, where we can turn any of these things on or off as required. There are many more options that you can add to your transport bar, um, but those are the ones that I use. Pick and choose which ones um, you, want to, you want to use from that selection. In the next video, I'll show you around this left-hand panel over here. It can be pretty confusing with all of its multiple tabs and different context views, so we'll deal with that in a separate video. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you then.